Folks, I wanted to share a fun little fish with you. Some of you may have already heard about this fish, but if you haven't, I certainly wanted to share. First collected in 1998 and brought into the hobby in 2005, so still a relatively new fish in the hobby, and it's a great alternative to some of our more common algae grazers or biofilm off-wax grazers. Fun little fish, tons of personality. That's all coming up right now. In the hobby, we have a lot of algae grazers or biofilm off wax grazers that help keep our tanks clean. Some of the more common ones, of course, are bristlenose plecos, great at eating brown diatom algae and some green algae, a mono shrimp, great at eating hair, brush, and string algae, and in some cases, blackbeard algae, though mine don't seem to particularly like blackbeard algae, I am trying to encourage them. A favorite of mine for setting up and cycling tanks, nearite snails that'll eat soft film, soft green, and again, brown diatom algae. Some of the best brown diatom algae eaters, autosynclus. They are also an off wax or biofilm grazer. And whether we have regular autosynclus or the zebra autosynclus, I see these more in stores now. They're a little bit bigger than your traditional autosynclus. And we have our Siamese algae eaters, great at eating blackbeard algae and green hair algae. Here's mine here, who's just feasting on some blackbeard algae. Of course, I was very happy about that, but there's another fish that's not quite as commonly known. For this fish, we're gonna go to the Myanmar mountains. We're gonna go to Burma, specifically the Rakhine Yoma Mountains. This is in Western Myanmar, an area that hasn't been studied all that much until recently, and they're finding some new fish. And this is a fish that likes faster flowing streams, and that is the Pandagara. This was first collected in 1998 and introduced to the hobby in 2005. So again, a relatively new fish in the hobby, native to the, the Rakhine, I hope I'm saying that right, Rakhine Yoma Mountains in Western Myanmar. Now that area is isolated and it's been little studied until recently. Another fish very popular right now in the hobby that was discovered in the same area is the Celestial Pearl Danio. These were discovered in 2006 in Myanmar. So a lot of really cool fish being discovered in that area, which previously was so isolated, it really wasn't studied that much. And look at what we're starting to find. Now, a gentleman named Dr. Sven Collander collected the Pandagar in 1998 and noted that he did find some in some stagnant pools, but for the most part, they're far more active in areas with higher water flow. In fact, he's recommending in aquariums, you wanna have a filter that turns the water over at least 10 times an hour. They do much, much better and thrive in areas with flow. Part of the reason for this is their adaptations. Now they have a modified lower lip. It forms a disc-like adhesive appendage so they can maintain position in those fast flowing waters while still feeding on off walks or biofilm. Now biofilm, which we have in our tanks, you can kind of see it on the top of your tank sometimes. It's a collection of various microorganisms and it grows on a lot of different types of surfaces. So this is type of an algae eater, but also loves to graze on off walks or biofilm. Now this is a fish with a ton of personality and a great size for a lot of community tanks. In a second here, when he grazes on the glass, you can see how their mouths are specially dish-shaped. It allows them to hang on tight to rocks in fast-flowing streams so they can still graze on algae and biofilm in their native habitats. In my experience in owning this little guy for the last few months, they do love to hang out on leaves, though that's not that indicative of their natural habitat, which are high-flowing rivers with a lot of rocks. There he was on some jungle val. Here he is on some Anubias. Can always find him on leaves. And of course, that's where a lot of off walks and biofilm is. It grows on all surfaces, so he does like to graze on it on the leaves. Here he is on some Crip Wenty. And I decided to put him in my 36 gallon tank, which does have quite a bit of flow. So far, he's been thriving and they are adaptable fish. They do like a neutral pH, but they can adapt. Temperatures 72 to 80. They do like highly oxygenated setups. So you do want plenty of water movement. You do want to use an air pump and an air stone and a good amount of lighting just to promote algae and biofilm growth, but they only grow to about three and a half inches. So again, this is a great fish for a lot of normal community tanks. Now to generate flow in this 36 gallon bow front, I do have an Aquion 700 powerhead in the top right of the tank and a Fluval 306 canister. Between those two, get plenty of surface ag agitation, plenty of flow inside the tank. He certainly seems that he is enjoying it. I do have an air pump and an air stone that I run a lot of the time, it is on a timer, but he seems to really like this. And this fish, again, it has a ton of personality. 
swims in all areas of the tank, whether it's day or night, super active and very, very peaceful. Now it's recommended that you keep these either as singles or in groups of five or six. You also do wanna have a tight fitting hood. They are notorious for escaping. Even when I was drip acclimating him when I got him, he was trying to almost crawl out of the bag. He couldn't wait to get out. So definitely want a tight fitting hood with these guys. But again, they are all over all areas of the tank. And at night, I'll see him scavenging for little morsels of food. I do feed a spirulina flake. And since they are an algae grazer, that's a good type of flake for them. But you'll see them at night a lot scavenging around. And again, active all the time. I'm not exactly sure when these little guys sleep. Every time I look in the tank, he's doing something. Now, as with many of the typical algae grazers or biofilm grazers in the hobby, we don't wanna just rely on the algae or the biofilm, especially if our tank doesn't have enough. So we do wanna still supplement with a wide variety of foods. This guy particularly likes spirulina flakes and he loves rapashi food. Here he is eating some rapashi. This is a combination of rapashi soylent green and community plus. It's a little mixture that kind of accommodates all of the fish in the tank. He really, really does like that as well as the spirulina flakes, but they will eat other regular flake food and most of the commercially available foods. He also loves to play with his food. And I've seen him kick around a piece of rapashi for a little while, then he'll eat it a little bit, then he'll kick it around a little bit more. So again, just tons of personality. These are really, really cool, playful fish. So the case I'd like to make is that this is a great fish for a community setup if you have enough flow. It stays small, only three and a half inches. It's peaceful, doesn't bother any other fish. It's very adaptable with water parameters. It's an algae and biofilm grazer, so it'll help you out and clean up your tank a little bit. And it's easy to feed, accepting a wide range of foods and tons of personality. It's a fun little fish, so if you can find it, I would highly recommend if you have enough flow, check this fish out. Starting on episode three of Show Us Your Tanks. If you'd like to show us your tank, simply email dmichaelsfishden at gmail.com. Send in a picture or a video of your tank in a description, really anything you would like to tell us, how long you've been in the hobby, what type of fish you're keeping. Add your YouTube name or handle or your first name and we'll feature you on episode three of Show Us Your Tanks. Please like, comment, subscribe for future content. Stay safe out there and thanks for watching.